Get ready, we're about to show you your photos of the Northern Lights. We got so many of them and I can't wait to show you my favorites. Space weather bringing the northern lights back to the Carolinas. And you're not the only one who saw red tonight. So many of you sent in photos to the Carolina Weather Group. We're going to show them. But what exactly have we been viewing out our windows and in our backyards? Well, take a look at this. This is a look at the incoming X-ray data that is coming in from space and being detected by our weather satellites. The same weather satellites that normally look at hurricanes down here on Earth, also look back up at space. And we're gonna to talk to a NASA scientist coming up in just a few minutes to learn more about X-ray detection and what exactly comes off the sun in order to produce amazing photos like these. So many of you sent us photos and we're just gonna show a few of them right now, but we have even more on our Twitter and Facebook page. Check out these from our friend Evan Fisher up in Black Mountain, North Carolina. Look at this long exposure photo. You can see how bright the stars are, but also how vivid the colors are. Not only does he have the reds, the greens, and the purple, but I would say he's even got some streaking going on here as a part of this pulsing of energy that is coming in from the atmosphere. Our friend Sam Walker out in the Outer Banks, sure, these are a little bit dimmer, but they are seeing the aurora. He says in his 51 years, I have never seen anything quite like it, and I know some of you are experiencing that same disbelief. Frequent viewer of the show, Andrew Fairfield, writes in, noting the Second round. Look how bright and vivid these colors are. I believe he's in South Carolina, if I recall correctly. And what exactly does he mean by second round? But let's go back to the x-ray data that the weather satellites were picking up. You can see we got a couple different influxes of that energy coming into the atmosphere. And so not only do we actually get it over the course of the last few days, we can see it spiking several times. Uh, we need it to come at night when we'd be able to see it here in the Carolinas or elsewhere across the Northern Hemisphere. And so we actually kind of got two waves of it. And that's what Andrew means when he said he went back outside for a second round, that being about 10, 10, 30. Stuart P says in Wilson, North Carolina and in Nash County, he got photos just like this. Maybe you did too. Hit us in the comments. Let us know where you are and what you saw. More photos to come because I could look at these all night and I suppose you could too. That's why you're here. Jay in Monk's Corner, just outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Look how much of the sky that fills up. And Jay here is in the neighborhood, right? We can see trees. We can see lights. We can see houses and still filling that sky. Uh, another picture from Brad Panovich, chief meteorologist at WCNC Charlotte. This photo taken nearly 1,500 feet up in the air from the transmitter sky cam that looks over Gaston County. And you can see, again, all of those layers of colors. This camera, no stranger. It also picked up the northern lights that we experienced earlier in the year. Colleague Tim Buckley over at WFNY in Greensboro explaining exactly how the Aurora works. He posted this on social media, which shows those solar winds carrying that energy from the sun and then interacting with the magnetic field. And when it's strong enough, it will push far enough south. Sure, right, they're called the Northern Lights because typically we see them over the most northern parts of the planet. And when we get a strong enough storm like we did today up to what they call a G5, you can start to see it in portions of the Carolinas and further south than you normally can. So we got some more photos. These came to us from Carolina Weather Group Facebook fans. And you can see here John O'Brien in Southern Shores. Just again, look how bright that is. Look how 
pink then is? Sure, we know lots of you are using long exposure photography. That's the best way to be able to see this. And I'm sure all of the photos I showed you so far were exposed over several seconds. I'm sure it looks more vibrant in the photo than it does with your naked eye, especially when you're trying to combat city lights. This one's a, a little blurry, but you can see we might be at an airport overlook or some sort of area outside the initial city limits, Pine Knolls Shore, this from Leah. And you can see again how much of the sky this takes up. If you've got a really good view up to the north, you can fill that sky with so much color. Uh, let's see, we got Surrey, Virginia. We're going to do an honorable mention for Virginia just near North Carolina. Penny writing in again, like me, uh, kind of battling a lot of the trees. But even through that, you can still see the nice wallpaper of color filling the background of the sky there in Virginia. Catawba, North Carolina. I think this, I think this, Megan, is like an award-winning photo because the way you've got it kind of laid out we can see the stars we can see the northern lights and you've got this beautiful field with this picturesque tree like if somebody were to try to bob ross paint this this is i think exactly what this would look like and again long exposure is probably being used here because that's making the field look probably pretty bright for what it was at 10 11 o'clock at night but again a, just a beautiful landscape on top of beautiful science. Also, here's another beautiful landscape. Allison sent this one to us outside Saluda, North Carolina. You guys hitting it out of the park with the scientific discoveries and the layout of your photos. Take a look at this farm silo, an old barn. You can see the stars and the northern lights there. One more, this one from Swan Beach, North Carolina. Catherine sharing it with us. And again, kind of like some of the earlier photos, you can kind of see some of the streaks, kind of the pulsing of the energy there in the night sky. Feel free to drop a comment. Let us know where you're watching us from tonight. Let us know what you saw. Uh, we've got uh, somebody watching from Lake Lower, North Carolina. They're seeing them there. And again, I just want to, again, hearts out to everyone across Western North Carolina after Helene. We know you guys are going through a lot right now. Maybe this light show tonight brought you a little something different, a little joy. And if you're watching this right now and you want to help the people of Western North Carolina or anyone impacted by Helene, we still have our campaign going in the top left corner of the screen, the QR code to donate to the WeatherPods Disaster Relief Fund supporting the American Red cross. Uh, we've got more pictures coming in on social media, and we will uh, try to retweet and share as many of those as possible because this is just yet another really cool night here in the Carolinas. Hope you got to see it. Maybe you woke up your friends, your neighbors, your kids, whatever it may be, and you took them outside. We want to try to level you up and, and give you a little bit of an insight into exactly why this is occurring and why it doesn't normally occur. So our weekly weather and science podcast, Carolina Weather Group, did an episode on this. I can't read the thumbnail. I think it was episode 497 earlier this year. And we talked to two really smart guys as they were getting ready to launch a new weather satellite. And one of those guys is Dr. Jim Spann. He's a senior scientist who studies space weather. And he leveled me up and helped me explain exactly what those X-ray fluctuations were on the weather satellite. Here's a clip of that interview. Take a listen. And uh, space weather, just like we have weather here on Earth, space is not an empty void, is, even though that's kind of what generally people think. Um, there, there are charged particles there. There are magnetic fields. There are very intense radiation um, events. And so space weather is just the environment of space, um, almost exclusively driven by our sun, our personal star, the sun. And the sun is a, is, is a regular star in, in the uh, a plethora of stars that we have, but nevertheless, it's an active star. And <clears throat> um, it will, um, I'll call it misbehave every once in a while by, uh, it'll have a flare um, which produces a lot of uh, x-rays oftentimes, and, and, and I can talk about the impact of x-rays. <clears throat> um, it also has, um, oftentimes with these um, flares, it'll have um, uh, spew out a lot of very intense or very energetic particles, and those are kind of radiation. And uh, while x-rays travel at the speed of light, and they arrive at the Earth about eight minutes after they emitted from the sun, the, the charged particles, the radiation, energetic particles travel slower, but it's at a fraction of the speed of light. And so it, they may get here 
you know, hours after um, they're um, expelled from the sun. And then the third um, aspect of space weather that I'll share is called a coronal mass ejection. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the sun has a corona. We, it's kind of like the outer atmosphere. And it's, it's comprised of plasma or electrified gas. And occasionally a large explosion will occur on the sun, which will essentially lift off part of that corona. And um, <clears throat> so it's called a coronal mass ejection. So it ejects that mass off the corona. And if, if in the line of sight, uh, it strikes our planet, it interacts with our own magnetic field and energizes um, um, particles in our, in our magnetosphere, the area surrounding our Earth, uh, driven by the magnetic field. And that can cause um, uh, major disturbances as well. And radiation disturbances typically are um, you know, you think of radiation, you know, chemotherapy and stuff like that, where radiation can be harmful to humans is what I'm saying. Sure. And um, x-rays cause problems with uh, communications. And these large coronal max ejections are probably the biggest um, impact. And they can cause problems with communications, but they can also induce currents on power lines, which can um, play havoc with the electrical grid. And they are also the source of the aurora. So in some ways, the Aurora is actually the, the best manifestation of space weather. It's really great that we get a chance to talk with you here ahead of this satellite launch, but also after we had such a rare viewing of the Aurora yes. here in the Carolinas, because it gave me such a unique perspective now. I have so many more questions for you than I probably <laughs> would have had before that experience. Let me just keep going on your train of thought with x-rays, if I, if I may, because... Okay. I kind of tried to self-teach myself during that Aurora event here in the Carolinas about this webpage that I'm putting on the screen now for our viewers, the GOES yep. X-Ray Flux One Minute Data Page, which I did not have bookmarked until we had that Aurora event. So what was it that I was looking at when I was watching that spike here? So those are two um, um, energies or wavelengths of, of X-rays that are shown there. Um, a, a lower energy and a higher energy. And basically GOES has a, has a sensor which is sensitive to X-rays and it tracks it, um, you know, 24 seven. And when a large uh, flare occurs, you'll see those big spikes. So now you know, we have the link to that X-ray flux monitor page in the comments right now, if you're watching live with us on YouTube and on Facebook. And if you liked what you just saw, I hope you join us each week for our weekly Wednesday night podcast. A couple more photos before we go. These coming in to us as you're watching along with us live here tonight on the Carolina Weather Group. This one from Modoc, South Carolina, and sharing this one with us. And oh, this is another one of those landscapes I'm just loving. We've got some water here. I don't know exactly what body of water it may be. Uh, but you can see also with, I'm going to do another Bob Ross mention, little happy trees here uh, in the foreground with the aurora in the background. And Crystal from Shaw Borough, take a look again. You almost see kind of a dome-like feature with the way this one was photographed. You can kind of see the way the pinks kind of arch on through. So we invite you to keep sharing your photos with us. We'd love to see more of them. We're going to be retweeting and sharing as many of them as we can. We appreciate you guys sharing them and just really enjoying this scientific show with us tonight. It's so amazing when, when this happens and it's right here in our own backyard. But for now, I'm James in Charlotte. If you'd like to watch more of our conversation, more space weather nerd facts, you can watch that whole episode with Dr. Jim Spann talking about space weather and also the new weather satellites. They launched earlier this year and they're helping us track storms just like Colleen and Milton. So check out that QR code on your screen right now for that full episode. But for now, from Charlotte, I'm James Brierton. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again real soon.